Welcome back. The National Council on Public Transportation is in disbelief by the death of one of their own. Melville Charles, the Leclerc bus driver, was discovered dead over the weekend inside his minibus in the cul de sac area. The Public Relations Office of the National Council on Public Transportation says Charles was dedicated to the public transportation service and will be remembered by all in a positive light. On the afternoon of Saturday, December 19th, the body of Melvin Joseph Charles, better known as Flying, was discovered by a passerby inside of the M662 minibus that he drove, parked along a roadside in the cul sac area. The Barnard Hill resident was reportedly found with multiple stab wounds about his body. Charles was a minibus driver of over 20 years and was also a former basketball coach at the St. Mary's College. The public relations officer of the National Council on Public Transportation says Melvin's death comes as a shock to all. We do not know the motive or any details on what actually happened, but from all accounts, Melvin was murdered. We are hoping that the relevant authorities will act swiftly and do everything in their power to bring justice to Melvin and his family. The NCOPT is therefore calling on all members to remain vigilant during this period as bus operators are more heavily scrutinized currently. The PRO has fond memories of the long-standing bus driver who he says was kind to all whom he encountered. I remember playing with flying in the gardens in the early to mid 80s, where he was a very determined and effective guard. On behalf of the, of the National Council on Public Transport, I wish to extend our sincere condolences to the family of Mayville Charles. And may God bless you and keep you strong during this difficult time and also to his friends and colleagues on the Black Larry Bastion. Lesman says that the council will not allow this gruesome incident to deter them from continuing to ply their trade. He did, however, admonish commuters to be on their guard near the bus stands and on board the buses. For the Hot 7 News, Nisha Charles reporting. Thank you, Nisha. And on a point of correction and elucidation, in earlier media reports on the matter, it was indicated that Charles was found nude. Police have since clarified that he was in a state of, quote, partial undress, referring to his shirt being partially off and his torso being partially exposed, but he was not nude. We apologize for the wrong impression and we will keep you updated with the police investigation into this matter. Following reports that a woman was sexually assaulted, calls are once again being amplified to allow women to carry things on their person to protect themselves from violence. President of the Beauceju Community Group, Jim Joseph, and Sergeant of Police, Siobhan Matthew, have agreed that women should be allowed to carry pepper spray for protection. St. Lucia's police commissioner sided with Trinidad when it came to the call for women to carry pepper spray to protect themselves from heinous acts of violence. Many others have indicated that this move would only be one step in the directions to eliminate gender-based violence. On Sunday morning, a woman on her daily morning walks was accosted by a knife-wielding assailant and sexually assaulted. President of the Bosichu Community Group, Jim Joseph, explained that while the laws do need to change to allow women to carry protective equipment such as pepper Spray, the issue goes deeper and there is need for a lot more. The laws, although they are changing to take into consideration the plight of women, I still think that there's a lot that needs to be done. It is not just about using pepper spray, but we have to understand that education is important. We always have to go to the root cause. Things like pepper spray, things like getting the police, things like defending oneself. These are reactionary measures. We have to think about what we as individuals do as parents, as guardians, as neighbors, as leaders. What do we do to educate our young people? Sergeant of Police at the Grosley Police Station, Siobhan Matthew, weighed in on the conversation and explained that not only pepper spray, but individuals need to ensure that they know at least the basics when it comes to self-defense. Persons use the pepper spray to do um, other things apart from defending themselves because the pepper spray, it could be spread into a crowd and, you know, and affect persons. 
I believe that um, if it's being used or if it's being issued to persons, um, there should be instructions to using it, and persons need to um, um, be, how should I say, be, be grown up, yeah, be responsible, sorry, um, when it comes to using um, um, the, the pepper spray. I think nothing wrong with women carrying it around. I personally, there are other um, devices that they could use to protect themselves. Um, also, I believe some women, women and both, both men and women should enroll in, in a self-defense class. Joseph also explained that given the circumstances that we live in right now due to COVID-19, it is important that people take a minute to realize the importance of loving and respecting life. He says a deeper look needs to be taken to understand what perpetuates such a culture of violence. What are we doing in our schools, in our churches, to teach men or boys to be men? to teach women how to treat men because violence is not only one-sided. It's not only women who face uh, the <laughs> attacks. Men are sometimes <laughs> treated worse than, than women. It's not reported commonly, but we have to ensure that we educate our young people, we educate ourselves, and especially in this COVID environment, that we deal with one another in love. As calls continue to be made for the laws to be revised to allow women to carry pepper spray, advice is also being given for there to be more education as well as for women and girls to learn self-defense. Reporting for Hot 7 News, I am Geneve Gonzalez. European Union officials are discussing a joint response to the new, more infectious COVID-19 variant in the UK, which has sparked travel bans by many countries. Canada and India joined European states in blocking flights from the UK while Europe-bound train services via the Channel Tunnel have been halted. The new variant is said to be up to 70% more transmissible, but there is no evidence that it is more deadly. There is also no proof to suggest that it reacts differently to vaccines. Two meetings took place in Brussels on Monday, one involving health ministers and another with the EU's crisis response team. But no decision is expected until Tuesday when EU ambassadors meet. A French official told the BBC that they were desperate to reopen the borders as soon as safely possible, with one option discussed being the requirement that UK travellers, including lorry drivers, prove they have had a recent negative COVID-19 test. In other news, Caribbean Airlines Cargo is currently developing a COVID-19 vaccine transportation plan to ensure its readiness to distribute the vaccine throughout the Caribbean. The airline is currently consulting with stakeholders in advance of making preparations for the movement of the vaccine. Caribbean Airlines Cargo offers expansive global and regional connectivity through its scheduled flights, charter flights, and interline arrangements. The carrier says it can facilitate the transport of temperature-controlled shipments to the Caribbean from several territories worldwide, including Europe, India, and the U.S. Speaking against the backdrop of the sexual assaults that transpired over the weekend, a cop who cares, Sergeant Siobhan Matthew, has reiterated the need for individuals to be careful when exercising, especially if they are alone. Geneve Gonzag reports. Members of the Boseju community are reeling from the news that a woman was sexually assaulted during a morning walk. Sergeant of Police at the Grosely Police Station, Chauvin Matthew, gave some tips on what people should and should not do when they go out walking. Matthew indicated that many more individuals have taken up exercise as a way to cope with COVID-19 and news of such an incident is disturbing and heart-wrenching. An incident like that could happen to any of us, whether it be a male or a female. Um, Nowadays, we find a lot of persons go out to exercise on a morning, especially on an early morning. I, too, myself go out to exercise. And when you go out to exercise, it's sometimes on an early morning, it's already dark. And a lot of the places that we venture into exercise are uh, secluded and kind of quiet, especially in the Boseju area. Um, what I could encourage persons to do is go out and exercise in groups. All right, there's always strength in numbers. When you go out to exercise, allow persons to know where you're going. All right, I remember long ago, and it still happens, um, some of the old folks who used to go out to exercise used to go out with a piece of stick or a piece of steel. Now, sometimes they use it to either chase away dogs or they use it to, um, to defend themselves if they have to. 
Matthew, who recently put out a short film giving advice on the do's and don'ts when exercising, explains that women in particular need to be more careful as most times they are seen as the weaker gender. Matthew also had some words of advice for the individuals who usually post their whereabouts on social media. Don't geotag yourself. You know, a lot of persons like to put their roots on social media before they go out to exercise. You know, or while during the exercise, they normally take photos um, whilst exercising. I take photos whilst I exercise, but I normally post them on my social media page on, re on when I return home. All right, it's always good to let persons know that, you know, where you're going so that, you know, if you're not back home at a certain time, they could find you or they could, you know, know where to start. Okay, if it's an investigation, the police know where to start. Matthew says people should also live by the see something, say something mantra. If you're seeing suspicious persons in the area that persons go out to exercise, it's always good to alert the police around the time you see those persons. All right, and I know right now with the whole COVID-19, you might see somebody on an early morning with a mask, a surgical mask, a hoodie, but that should raise an eyebrow, that should raise suspicion. So if on that day you get past that person, alert the police as to what you may have seen because that person may not attack you, but that person may attack someone else. He points out that masks can be used for a dual purpose and therefore individuals need to always be on their guard. Reporting for Hot 7 News, I am Janine Gonzalez. You're watching the Hot 7 TV nightly news. Stay with us. There's more coming up after the break.